The life of Jehoshaphat is a very interesting life, and the reason I want to talk about it is because many of us are entering into a new season in our lives. Some of us are going into school, first time in university, you know, like my daughter, and, and uh, some of you are going to a, a new grade, new class, new, something is new. And so in this new season of your life, what I want to do is to set you up and put some ideas into your head, some th teaching in your head, so that you can position yourself to reap the amazing harvest and to live in amazing victory and that God will establish you himself in whatever uh, 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 vocation that you have chosen or wherever you are. And so King Jehoshaphat is a very interesting character. Not a lot of people talk about it. I know there was a song being sang and written about it. But you know, I haven't really heard a lot of people speak about King Jehoshaphat. And I found his character to be quite interesting. And so we're going to study the life of King Jehoshaphat. Now, King Jehoshaphat had a great start with a godly father. Now, godly father is very important. Now, it's not a guarantee. We've seen there are godly father that kids, uh, with kids that just don't serve the Lord or whatever. But godly father is very important. It gives your children a great kickstart, a great start. It puts them ahead. Whatever they want to do with it is up to them. They could go further ahead or they could just, you know, turn away and turn away from God. But it would give them a head start. So what happened for King Jehoshaphat is that his dad, King Asa, was an absolutely godly man. He was a God-fearing man. He heard uh, the prophet Ezariah talk about the judgment of God or whatever, and so he obeyed, and so he turned his nation around, even though his mother and father, they were evil kings. They, 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 they took Israel out of the promise of God. They, 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 they caused Israel to sin. They caused Israel to turn away from God, actually Judah, more specifically specifically not Israel, Judah to turn away from God. And, and, and so when King Asa, uh, Asa took over, he really had to make a 180 degree turn and bring the nation back to God. And so he did that. And so there were revival of, uh, of worshiping God in the, in the nation of Judah. And so when, when his son took over there, when Jehoshaphat took over, um, uh, the nation's already in the period of revival in worshiping God and, and, and serving God. And so he had a really great great start was uh, so blessed by God that he has influence and power unlike any other king except King David in fact his army was bigger than David you know if you look at sec uh, first Kings and first Chronicle uh, first King says that David had about 800,000 fighting men and in first Chronicle they have a different tally and so they say uh, King David had about over a million fighting men but you know, King Jehoshaphat, he had over 1.1 million fighting men. He, his, he was able to amass a vast army, and people are afraid of him all around the countries. They're fearful of him, you'll learn. And he was able to rule with tremendous peace in the country. And so his influence, his power was like David. Now his lifestyle was like David. And we're going to talk more about that later on, about King David. But his lifestyle, his choices, the way he worshiped God is like David. And so God honor him and bless him. Now, throughout the history of Judah and Israel, I'm going to explain to you what that means. There's actually two nations, Judah and Israel. Throughout the history of Judah and Israel, there are about 41 kings, I believe. And out of the 41 kings, only six of them serve God wholeheartedly. King Jehoshaphat is one of them. There are some that started serving God, you know, early on in their lives, you know, and then later on they just turned their back on God, like King Solomon. Not only King Solomon, quite a number of them are like that. They started off great, you know, they honor God and God established them, and then boom, they turned around. It's, 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 so, it's such a familiar story. I've seen so many believers, you know, they come to church, they get saved, and God started to bless them, and, and they become really blessed, and, you know, uh, um, and then you don't see them at church anymore. They're too busy about the blessing. And so, you know, I want to encourage you. Don't be like, you know, some of the king, like King Solomon. But you stay the course. Everybody say, stay the course. Stay the course in your faith and serve God all the days of your life. Be like those amazing champions and great cloud of witnesses that are ahead of us. Now, let me share with you a bit of history because I think I brought some confusion just now when I tell you Israel and Judah because a lot of people think it's the same thing. It's different. You see, uh, Israel started, well, when they started become under uh, a monarch, under, under king. King Saul basically ruled both uh, uh, Israel, all the 12 tribes actually. 
And then after King Saul, of course, King David, he ruled the entire 12 tribe. And then after that, King Solomon came up. Now, King Solomon, as I mentioned, he served the Lord. He was able to do great and amazing things for God. Built a huge temple, you know, was the smartest person on earth. Wrote a lot of different things. And people around the world came and listened to him talk about wisdom and talk about things, doing conferences, seminars, and so forth. And, and yet, at the end of his life, because he was so blessed, I think, he was so caught up with the blessing, he was distracted. And he started to turn away from God, you know. And he married an Egyptian wife, you know. And, and he married all different wives. And he followed those different wives, the Bible says, to worship different gods. And God said to Solomon, you, 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 you have violated the ways that your father had walked in. And therefore, I'm going to rip your kingdom away from you. I'm going to split your kingdom into two. And for the sake of your dad, I'm going to keep, uh, no, keep one, one tribe for you, Judah. And you, you can rule Judah, but the rest, I will take it away from your family. And that's how the, the nation of Israel got split into half. So they were uh, king, uh, the nation of Judah and king of the nation of Israel. Now, just a fact, just interesting facts, uh, if you want to know. Most of the Jewish people that we know of today are from the tribe of Judah. The, 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 uh, and, and some of Benjamin. The rest of the tribes, we don't even know who they are anymore. Because when Assyria uh, came and attacked Israel later on, uh, they really dispersed all the people of Israel, the northern Israel, all over the, the kingdom. And so they got dispersed all over the world, and there was no trace of them till today. And whereas Judah, there is, you know, always a, 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 a very, a effort to trace their race. And so the people that you call themselves Jewish, um, they actually have, rela the, the only, they are only part of the tribe, they came from the tribe of Judah. And so, so you know some of the, the, the history, the tidbits, okay? So, um, but you know, if you want to know another truth is that the, the nation of Israel, as soon as they got split up, never once did they turn back to serve God. From day one, they, have for, they forsook God and they chased up the idols and worshiped all the idols that the local people at the time was worshiping. Now, at the end of King Asa's reign, Jehoshaphat's father, that would be, there was a war. Israel became very greedy and Israel, the king of Israel, wanted to conquer Judah. And so they want to eat up Judah. And so uh, they send army and to want to attack Judah. Jerusalem is the city. And so they want to attack Judah. And what King Asa used to do is that he used to cry out to God. He said, God, help me. Every time when somebody's attacking uh, Judah, uh, King Asa would cry out to God. And God will send help and give them miracles, destroy their opponents. But this time when their brethren came and attacked them, what he did was that he went and he went and, and he went and hired. Uh, 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 soldiers from other nations, heathen soldiers from other nations to protect him. He used the resources he had to, 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 to help protect himself. And that's, that's very natural for many of us Christians. You know, we many Christians, we have had amazing miracles in our lives. We experience amazing miracles in our lives. We cry out to God when we're desperate. We had no resources. We say, God, help us. I need a job. I need to get healed. I need this and that. And it was in desperation that God would respond to us. But as, as soon as we start to have some resources you know we just forgot about crying out to God like him and so when trouble comes the first thing to do is we lean on the resources do you know that your blessing that God gave you the resources that he gave you and bless you are not meant to replace him every time when you have challenges and struggles instead of leaning on your resources the first thing you ought to do is to run to the presence of God and say God help me up help me up I need you because that's the way that God desires his people to operate is that even though he'd give you all the riches all the all the resources don't lead on them don't depend on them keep your heart pure keep your heart stay on God just lean on God God I need you I know I have all the money in the world to help me solve the problem but I know your problem your will is perfect now he may ask you to use the resources to solve your problem but don't don't lean on resources first don't run to him first you know I heard a preacher say every time when there's problem it's actually an invitation for you to go into the presence of God your problem is an invitation for you to go into the presence of God and yet many people just don't 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 do that they the first thing they do is they lean on something they could seek they could touch it's easier you see I want to encourage you not to do that I want to encourage you to always run to God in desperation, run to God. But in wealth, run to God. When times are good, run to God. When times are bad, run to God. Always lean on Him and His resources, not on your own. Amen. Can I hear an amen? 
King Jehoshaphat, King Asa's son, reign in his place and strengthen himself against Israel. So there was a tension between them and Israel, right? Now how did he do that? He placed forces in all 45 cities of Judah and set garrison in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim that Asa his father had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat and this is why. Number one, he walked in the early ways of his father David. Do you realize that God had placed many champions and heroes that are ahead of us for us to look at as example. Paul the Apostle said that you follow me as I follow Christ. It is good that sometimes you know we want to follow what Jesus is doing, follow what God is doing and that's the primary thing we need to do. But not only them but that there are, there are heroes and champions for him is his forefather David. He, you know, there are heroes and champions that God had placed ahead of us, or, 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 or placed, placed before us, sorry, so that we can watch and observe. This book of the Bible is a tremendous book of all the amazing examples of great men and women of God. If you do not know how to walk in the ways of the Lord, watch those men and women of God. Even the one in the modern history, you know, I don't encourage you to, to follow those people who are still alive because a lot of the people who are alive, they can actually fall into sin and get into problems, whatever, right? So my my, my, my policy is I always follow people that are dead, that are already dead. They're successful, um, they, they serve God and they didn't have any scandal and then they died, you know. Then I can, I'll follow them. Why? Because they can't come back and commit adultery and sin and disappoint you, right? And that's why I do that. So, the, but they, these are the people that God had placed ahead of us so that we can watch them and observe them. Now, King Jehoshaphat was a very smart man. He looked around all the history of Israel and he saw King David, his forefather, was most successful. And so he he walked in the early ways, uh, in the early ways of his father David. David was a worshiper. David was individuals that I spoke about earlier that in spite of all the struggles, of all the struggle, he continued to press in and trust God. One time, you know, there was a, 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 a there was a robbery happening when he and his his men fighting men was away, and people took away all their wives and all the children. It's not even his fault, and yet his own people, his own fighting men, talk about stoning him. You can imagine how discouraged that is. But you know what King David did? King David, the Word of God says he encouraged himself. Everybody say encourage himself. Do you know that in order for you and I to walk in the ways of God, there are from time to time you will need to learn how to encourage yourself. Because a lot of times things are not well. You know, in this, life, in this, in this journey called the journey of faith, this thing, this thing called life, there are a lot of attacks, a lot of surprises, a lot of things that happen that you never planned or thought or expect would happen. And it happens anyways. What do you do? Many of us will throw our hands up and say, forget about God. I'm not going to believe in God anymore. I believe all that I could believe. And now, that you know, it's not coming through. And what I believe for is not happening. I'm not going to believe in God anymore. You know, I can imagine David would do that. David was anointed king when he was 17 years old. And and yet he was on the run away from King Saul. The man supposed to protect him, the man supposed to be his father-in-law, wanted to kill him. He was supposed to be a king, yet he was hiding in caves for many, many years. I can just imagine what he would be thinking while he was in caves. You know, for many of us Christians would have given up. They said, forget about these dreams, forget about this, this, this anointing, whatever that the prophet had told me I would be. It is not happening. It's completely contrary to what has been told to me. So forget this God thing because it's not real and they will walk away. But King David, he pressed in. He trusted God. And in the story that he encouraged himself, he gives us a glimpse of how he operates. When things are bad, he pressed in. When things are bad, he worshiped God. You know, in Psalms, if you read Psalms with, if you read from the Bible with commentary and so forth, you know that many of the Psalms was written in, her, in, her, in, in, in the harshest moment of his life. 
he was able to praise God, worship God, and encourage himself. These are the ways, the early ways of his father David. Friends, may I encourage you to live the same way. Is be a worshiper. When things are tough, when things are not working out, and you hear mockery in your ears, you hear people like getting disappointed in you, and you are disappointed yourself, I want to encourage you, please, don't give up. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and shout it out, and worship God, and press in, and learn how to encourage yourself like King David. If you don't want to be like that, you can be like everybody else. Always have the tails between the legs and run away and give up and take, you know, and, and not, not serving anymore. But I want to encourage you. Do what King Jehoshaphat did. Follow the ways of David. Serve God. Encourage himself. Worship God in the midst of trials. Now, check this out. He did not seek Baals or the Baals but he sought God of his father and walked in his commands, commandments, sorry, and not according to the practice of Israel. That would be the neighbor, which also was a very common practice of his days. That is to worship Baals, to worship idols. Do you realize that in the days uh, of King Jehoshaphat and many of the kings, the most popular thing to do in terms of seeking help from deity, seeking help from, uh, from somebody that is greater than them because they all know that they, they need some help from heaven and they all worship God back in those days. Uh, they, there was no atheists. They all worship God and so they worship different gods and, and worshiping Baals was the most common practices. The Bible says King Jehoshaphat did not do according to the common practices of his day. That would be the practices of Israel. Many believers, we mix what we know as truth with other things. Practices of the day. Whether it's in church or outside church. Friends, I want to encourage you. Do not follow the trend. Do not follow the narrative of society of the day. But follow the word of God. It's easy to do what everybody is doing, to do what is a common thing. What is the common thing that people do today when they need help? Don't follow them. Follow the ways of the Lord. Be like King Jehoshaphat, unique and bold. Not seek after Baals. Now let's move on. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in His hand. Everybody say, the Lord established you know it is God who establishes you it is not yourself it is not your talent it is not your connection it is not your gifting many people may tell you that in order for you to be established you need to do this you need to do that you need to you know seek favor from this person seek favor from that person you need to play politics in office do all kinds of stuff do you realize that it is not people who establish you and in fact if people had established you the foundation that you have is very shaky who establishes us the Lord. God is the one who established you. When He establishes you, nothing and no one can move you. Can I hear an amen? Come on, let's praise the Lord. When God establishes you, it doesn't matter who is going to try to come after your job. Can I hear an amen? They cannot shake you. You are firm. You are established. So all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat. Do you realize that when God had established you, people will like you? Are you here this morning? Do you realize that you don't need to seek favor? Favor will seek you. It says, Jew that brought tribute, he didn't demand it, he didn't ask. People brought, and later on you'll see that even his enemies will bring gifts to him. <laughs> When the Lord establishes you, favor chases you. People will want to give you favor. And you wouldn't even know why. And they may not even know why. I had boss told me that I really don't know why, but I think I want to give you that job. I, didn't even apply. I did not even apply for it. But that's when favor chases you. And favor chases you when God establishes you. Amen? And so he had great riches and honor. Verse 6. His heart was courageous. Everybody say courageous. 
courageous in the ways of the Lord. Do you realize that if you want to follow God, you need to have a courageous heart? It's easy to follow the world. It's easy to follow what everybody is doing. You don't need any courage. Like I said, you don't need any faith. Because everybody is doing it. But when you follow God, sometimes, friends, you're going to find yourself standing alone in the corner. And you're looking for success. Success is not there. You're looking for affirmation and it's not there. Oh, you know, David gone through that as I mentioned earlier. But David discovered a way to how he can encourage himself. You need to be able to encourage yourself. You know, his heart was courageous because the ways of the Lord is a lonely way. It's a very lonely way. And when you want to do the right thing, you know, he took down the high places to assure him out of the Judah. There's another one of those idols thing. He need to have courage. People will say, well, what, what are you doing? That our forefathers worship it. Everybody's worship. Why are you taking it down? When you don't have courage, you really can't follow God. So listen, friends. What you and I need to learn how to do, how, how to live well in the ways of God is to find courage figure out how to encourage ourselves how to find courage when there's a lot of attack and opposition against us learn this skill you will go very 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 far furthermore in verse 7 in the third year of his reign he sent his officials but ben Hale, Abadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah to teach in the cities of Judah. Verse 9, And they taught in Judah, having the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went about through all the cities of Judah and taught among the people. See, what Jehoshaphat wanted to do is that he wanted the people of Israel to be successful and blessed also. He had discovered that walking in the ways of God caused him to be established, caused him to have riches and honor. So he is a generous king. He's a right king. Now, instead of saying, okay, everybody, I'm going to give you a bit of money. I can, I'm going to give you a bit of riches, you know, because I'm so rich. I'm going to bless you. King Jehoshaphat discovered another way to bless his people is that if he could teach them how to walk in the ways of God, he knows or he knew that they would be blessed. Do you realize that all of us who have tasted the, good, tasted the goodness of God, all of us who have tasted the amazing miracles of God, will tell you that the key for our victory, the key for us to be blessed, the key for God to establish us, for the key for us to walk in the ways of God, is knowing, watch this, the Word of God. I know it's not a very popular thing to say. Many believers know the word of many preachers. But we don't know the word of God itself. We have known the word of God through hearsay, but we have never read it ourselves. Do you realize that God has given us a book called the Bible, which is the most powerful book on this planet? It in it lies the secret of many great things for you and I to achieve, to experience. Great secrets to great successes. Great secrets to great victories in our lives. And yet, none of, many of us Christians just cannot find ourselves in the ability and the discipline to read the Word of God. And because we're not familiar with the Word of God, we are easily being deceived with many voices that are out there. And we're being pulled into many directions. Some people say we should do this, and so we try doing this. And then later on, we, we heard somebody else say, oh, we should do this, and so we try to do this. And then later on, we try to, you know, we try different things because we hear different preachers saying different things, and we ourselves are not familiar with the Scripture. I heard a very interesting story by a, a quite a well-known preacher. You know, he was sharing about his time when he was in Bible school. You know, when you're in Bible school, they have different preachers coming in to teach a Bible college students. And the preachers, all of them have different specialty, you see. And so you will have missionaries coming in to teach mission. And you have local pastors coming in to teach uh, about pastoring. And you'd have, uh, you have different people with different kind of ministry. Evangelists will come and teach about evangelism. And so he said, by the time he finished his first year Bible school, he was absolutely confused. This is what happened. So the evangelists come in and say, you know, 
know the Lord said to me, you have to evangelize, preach the gospel, win the world. Of your main objective is to, to go out there and evangelize and preach the gospel. You do nothing else but to preach the gospel. You need to go out there and go to the street and feed the poor. Preach the gospel, preach the gospel, preach the gospel. Next day, you know, another missionary came in and said, oh, the Lord had told us that we need to be missionaries. We need to leave this country. You know, the first guy said, preach the gospel in your neighborhood. And then this guy said, oh, you have to leave the country. If you don't leave the country, you know, comfort zone, you know, you're not following the will of God. You just want to stay comfortable. And so this missionary is just insisting that the ways of the Lord is to just go to another country to suffer for Jesus. And then the pastor comes in, you know, and the pastor said, you know, the Lord says, you know, you need to care for my sheep. You need to feed my sheep. You need to stay locally, stay faithfully. Don't go all over the world and just take care of the backyard first, take care of the sheep. The pastor, the, the fellow, fellow who said, uh, told us the story, he said, by the time I finished all that, I just didn't know what the will of God is. Everybody has an agenda. But unless you are familiar with the Word of God, and watch this, familiar with the voice of God, you'll be pulled 19 ways to Sundays. And you'll be so confused. I want to encourage you to make it an effort to study the Word of God, to know the Word of God. The fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were around Judah, and they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Do you realize that when the favor of God is on you, even your enemy is fearful of you? Do you have an awful boss? Do you have an awful colleagues? Don't worry about them. You, you allow God to establish you in the ways that I've just talked about. Your enemies will leave you alone. The word of God said that they left him alone. They made no more war against him because they know the favor of God is on him. In verse 11, that's even better. I mentioned it earlier on. The Philistines, the enemies, your enemy is going to bring presents and silver for tribute. He's got enemies all over when he took over. And guess what? Not only are they afraid of him, they just wanted to bless him. How do you like to live in a life that the people that hate your guts want to bless you? Isn't that good? You know, God wants you to stay in that place. When he establishes you, for my friends, even your enemy will bring gifts and do favors for you. And I'll tell you, they wouldn't know why. And they probably regret it after they did it. You know, you remember the people of Israel when they left Egypt? All the Egyptian masters gave them all the wealth. They probably didn't even know what they were doing. And after they did it, they probably regretted. Why was I so stupid and gave them everything? Do you realize that when the favor of God is on you, He establishes you, all this will happen to you. You can just rest. You don't have to fight your own battle. You don't have to try to get your own get your voice to be heard. Do politicking yourself, but you can rest in His love, in His peace, that He will establish you. Everybody, say, everybody says, God will establish me. I will not establish myself. Why don't you stand?